All right. So $64,000 question. After being here, you've said that you still feel confidently that we get rescheduling before the election along with SAFE. Do you still agree with that? Yeah, I think we have to. Hey, everyone. TDR Trade of Black podcast. We've been talking about this for a number of weeks. We are on location in Washington, D.C. As we bring you content here today, we're going to have a ton of content coming out the next couple of days. The senators, congressmen and congresswomen who we met with over the last 24 to 48 hours this week. Right now, we just want to bring you some action as we edit all this stuff up, bring it to you and talk about our big takeaways. Let's welcome in Don Murphy, who's considered God, I think, in this industry right now, but a big small lobbyist. G, very small G, very small G. G. <laughs> Anthony Vrell, good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. This has been great. It's been great to get access. It's been great to actually see how this, this whole world works. And it's good to see that some of the politicians are very well educated on the industry. Yeah. Others have open minds and then others just... Didn't want to talk to us. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it all came with the territory and it was much expected. Yeah. I will say one thing I've learned. I cannot believe the motor that you have, the energy. You're here, there, everywhere, introducing us, the pathways that you led us to. Like, it was incredible based on our experience. So a lot of viewers are going to ask, okay, when's this content coming out? What'd you learn? What's the big takeaway that we can share to our audience right now, what we experienced and the people that we spoke with? I think the big takeaway for you guys should be how easy it was to like yeah. get around get to people. We interviewed members on the street, unencumbered, no staff, no entourage, no detail, just by themselves. The big folks that we need to talk to, our sponsors of SAFE, our co-sponsors of SAFE, people who are leading the charge, yeah. we got to without a whole lot of trouble. And I think that was probably a big eye opener for you because you just can't believe uh, how quickly we got to people. You weren't here 10 minutes and we literally talked to the Senate sponsor of Safe Banking. Okay, so day one grabbed my attention. We saw Senator Vance from Ohio and this is a person that voted down or no on Safe Banking. I approached him. I thought he was going to walk right past me, but he gave us three minutes and we were walking. But the one thing, and you'll see this later on this week when we release some of this content, is that he thought the way Safe Banking was structured and the wording was a gateway for addiction towards fentanyl. And really, a lot of these politicians have no idea that cannabis is still a Schedule One drug versus fentanyl being a Schedule Two. And stats, I think you shared with me, Anthony, in the past, yeah. is 100,000 people have overdosed on fentanyl alone last year in America. And zero have overdosed from cannabis in right. the history of the plants. So, I mean, that we are literally standing on the steps yesterday that a congressman told us that alcohol actually kills more people on an annual basis right here. than cannabis. Right here, he told us. And he was a no. He's, he's and, not with us. And, and he's he not no, with us. And he was a no on safe banking. Um, so that just goes to tell you that they are educated. They do understand. I mean, there just needs to be a push to get them to actually act. And I mean, I really do think that's coming um, sooner rather than later. I mean, Representative Mast earlier in his office told us every day that goes by is a step closer. It's not a step back. And I mean, I generally agree with him on that point. I mean, I think that was a very... Con that was a very contrite way to put it. Yeah. Well, I think the big question our audience is going to want to find out and learn what kind of feedback that we get. Do we think safe banking is going to pass between now and the election? And I asked that probably to every single politician and it was a mixed bag. You know, I think a lot of them, I don't think could give me an accurate answer because they're so uninformed on the actual industry itself. Well, it's not that they're uninformed. They are informed about so many other things, and this is not on their plate for many of them, right? There are 10,000 bills that are filed in Congress. Their bills are more important than anyone else's bills. Bills on behalf of their constituents, more important than anything else. And so they just don't know yet because they don't have to know yet. When the bill comes to the floor, then they'll get educated. They'll figure out one way or the other. But until then, they, they just do not know the details of SAFE or any of these other bills that we're, we're yeah. working on. Senator Steve Daines, Senator Rand Paul, got a chance to speak with him for probably two or three minutes, which was great. Merkley, Corey Gardner. Don't start naming names because you're going to miss a lot of people. I know. Yeah, that that happens to me all the time. You know, I talk to a whole bunch of members, then I get on the train and I write on the back of some envelope, who did I see today? And I start going down the list because you can't necessarily make notes in real time because you're... I won't say chasing, but you are looking for the next member as soon as you're done with the last one, right? And you're not all oh, ma making notes. You just remember and then you just go on. So here's a question then. We were here for what, 36 hours based on who we met with, regardless of the list, but you saw who we spoke to. Do you think we accomplished, not giving us credit, but I'm saying, do you think we accomplished a lot for the industry and the people that we spoke to here today? I think you accomplished a lot for the issue 
because for the most part, no one's sticking a microphone in the face of a member of Congress yeah. asking these questions. Yeah, there's newsprint media and there's uh, other folks, but not doing this kind of work, not not video, not audio. And and I think it helps elevate. Look, when they're thinking about what they talked about today, this is now on the on the radar. It's now on, you know, on their list of things to consider that, oh, somebody may ask me this question. So I need to maybe talk to staff about getting me up to speed on where safe banking is, what its chances are and all that. So, yeah. um, you know, look, I think Congress, Congressman Mast had a pretty good point on that as well. He said, you're not seeing the fervor or veracity on the federal level. You're seeing it on the state level. And I mean, that's a problem because while this is a state rights issue, he believes it's a state right, state's rights issue. We believe it's a state's rights issue. There's major federal, um, major federal reform that needs to happen in, in order for the states to act unencumbered. So, I mean, it, it needs to get louder up here um, as, it regard, as it relates to the cannabis industry. Yeah, the, the, the vibe that I got is whether you agree or for it or against it, there's just one thing that's consistent. It's just there's not a lot of people that don't want to put their name behind this. They, they, even people that vote in favor of SAFE, some of the different senators that we approached, it's like they're approving a number of different bills and they just want to like, you know, bury this sort of amongst all other things. Again, for, for many members, there's no upside, especially Republicans. There's no upside to co-sponsoring safe banking. And look, you guys talked to at least two senators today yeah. who were yes on safe. They're not co-sponsors, Republicans. So, uh, proof to you that they that the safe is filibuster proof, right? We do not need eight, nine, ten co-sponsors to prove that we know because they've told us. Yeah. I think it's important to share to our audience too, that yes, we did speak to a lot of people that supported safe. We also had some key interviews to people that were not supportive of safe. One of the people that we pitched out had a little stake outside of one of the rooms, Corey Booker. We waited for him forever. Want to know part of us. We're trying to get, catch up to him down the hallway, but you know, we hope to obviously have him on an interview as well. Matt Gates, he came out and I know he was in a hurry, but these are just the the reality of the uh, landscape There's that we're no in, right? There's no telling the kind of response you're going to get from your friends versus your foes, yeah. right? Yeah. We've had foes come right out, Vance, talk to you for three minutes. We've had some others. Uh, and then we've had really good guys, yeah. co-sponsors, leaders go, I got time for you, you know, yeah. leave me alone. I'm yes, but leave me alone. You uh, could definitely see when Mitt Romney, he has quite the presence. He came down the hallway. That was a great question that you told me to ask. At what point do you like deem cannabis as medicine and yeah. walk right I mean, past into a room. Also, I think it boils down to it is where they come from, like what kind of walk of life they come from. Mitt Romney is an older gentleman. He comes from the private sector. He comes from private equity. He's, he's a Mormon. I mean, J.D. Vance is backed by Peter Thiel. He's 39 years old. He comes from venture capital. He's obviously a guy having a, has an open mind. And I mean, I was honestly impressed by what he said, yeah. um, giving us the time of day, his perspective and just the willingness to, to listen and to engage. Um, I think you're going to get that from younger generations versus older generations um, that are walking around Washington. All right. So $64,000 question. After being here, you've said that you still feel confidently that we get rescheduling before the election along with safe. Do you still agree with that? Yeah, I think we have to. Like, I, Sorry. I think President Biden has to. They, they have to deliver. How do they not deliver on Schedule 3? We've got 250 pages of evidence, medical evidence that marijuana is now medicine. Who are these folks here in Congress to stop it? Or who is the DEA to stop it at this point? Cats out of the bag, uh, toothpaste is out of the tubes, brushing teeth, all that. It, it, it's all but a done deal. You agree with that? I tend to agree with that. And I tend to also think that in the event that that doesn't happen, this goes all the way up into that building right there over at the su Supreme Court. And this becomes a Supreme Court issue because HHS laid the groundwork, they laid the foundation, and they said every single thing that we needed to hear in order to validate the rescheduling of cannabis. And I mean, if it doesn't get that, that is directly going against science and data. And I mean, that doesn't lie. Those 250 pages are exhibit yeah. A. Yeah. In the case. We speculating here, but is there in, a, in, in a, any given chance that the DEA pushes back, even if the evidence is there, like they wouldn't recommend a schedule three? Is there any concern related to that? In some ways, I almost hope they do push back. Why? But then relent because it proves to the left, this is the best you're going to get, right? The left, the progressives of the party, the, the, the president's party want way more than schedule three. They want deschedule or bust. I've seen that hashtag, right? Yeah. So if 
we can take evidence to the left and say, this is all we're going to get. This is what the science proves. You want to follow the science? Here's the science. Schedule three. Be happy or just be quiet. Mm -hmm. One last thing I'll bring up, too. We got a chance to meet Jim McMahon, Ricky Williams today, walking around with them. What a story it was to hear both of them. But a lot of the feedback that they got is just keep coming back month in, month out, which Ricky has said he's determined to do yeah. and through his network. So that's a positive sign in the right direction. Yeah, I mean, I think it is. I think it also keys in on my point that I just made earlier. We need to be louder on a federal level here. I mean, Don's doing God's work up in Washington every uh, every day. And I mean, he can't be the only one. There needs to be louder voices here and more voices. It needs to multiply and then we will get stuff done. Yeah. What do you think of Jim McMahon's story as well? It's it's an amazing story in the in the fact that he's willing to share it. He and Ricky Williams. I mean, Ricky Williams really lived his his situation. He gave up his career in football to use marijuana as medicine. So to those who say there are other drugs that work, really, you think Ricky Williams would have taken something else that if it worked, so it, and he could still play football. And I said to one of the members of Congress, the fact that they are here. Look, we cannot win their votes until we get, we can't get their votes until we get their attention. Yeah. Ricky Williams and Jim McMahon being here helps get their attention. Look, you guys were in the hall with them. Yeah. Like members saw them, they stopped and they knew who they were. People like came over at lunch to introduce themselves. It was a huge win for this issue for sure. Yeah. Great guys too. All right. So that wraps up for now. We got lots of content coming. We at least want to get something out to you here today to give you just an update as to how the whole week went because we missed a couple of live streams earlier this week. We got a full mini doc with this guy behind the scenes that walks you through the hallways, the people that he meets, the rooms that he goes in, the conversations that he has. As well, come Monday during our normal four o'clock time slot for the live stream, we'll have all the clips of all the politicians that we spoke with. And we're going to do a live stream at eight o'clock on Sunday night. We'll be talking with Dan the Chartman to talk about the weekly performances, as well as Elliot Lane from Benzenga, as we got another busy week coming up next week, arguably the biggest capital conference in cannabis taking place in Hollywood, Florida next week. So lots going on, all this content and more. So we appreciate it. Smash that like button, leave lots of comments. If there's any questions that you have for us, any feedback, leave it below. We'll get back to you. Don will get back to you. Anthony will go back to you. We'll provide the feedback that you want. In the meantime, see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone, thanks for watching our latest podcast. Lots of momentum building. You guys getting all excited? Leave comments below. Again, we want to take this viral. Smash that like button and make sure to click on that bell for all notifications as we start to bring on bigger and bigger guests. Don't forget to subscribe to our daily newsletter, the Baked In newsletter, by logging on to thedalesreport.com. And we want to take this viral, as I said, and make this community grow. So make sure to subscribe on that channel because we wouldn't be here without you. Thanks again, everyone, for watching.